What do you say to somebody who, who, who a crit uh, the critique of this would just say, okay, there's a free market and the employer effectively is paying for the privilege. They are paying you effectively for the non-compete. So meaning meaning pe people can agree to contracts and one of, the con one of the contractual terms may very well be, I'm gonna pay you a little bit extra or, may, or whatever you think is appropriate so that you don't go off and work for my competitor tomorrow. Yeah, in theory, I think we've seen that um, people suggest there is that premium. I think we don't always see that in practice. Uh, sometimes employers are actually imposing these on workers even after they've agreed to a job. I think what we've also seen is that on net, this can be bad for competition in ways that we should be concerned about regardless. At the FTC, sometimes we hear from founders who were able to secure capital, they were looking to enter a market, they were able to build the factory, but at the end of the day, they weren't able to build and scale because all the relevant workers, the talent, was right. locked up. And I think when you look at states like California, that for decades have rendered non-competes non-enforceable, I think you can see that there can be a right. huge boon to innovation and competition. What about the idea of trade secrets? So part of this, and a lot of this comes from, from tech, where people have a view that there are folks who are engineers or others, or, or in, in healthcare, who have trade secrets. They know stuff. And so you don't want them to be able to go across the street and take either the trade secrets themselves or even sort of a, a, adjacent knowledge, if you will, in the immediate term at least, right? It's not necessarily just the trade secret unto itself. It's, you know what, even if they don't tell the other employer exactly what the other guys, they know too much and that has value at least in the first six months to a year out from that job. So we want to hold you away from having that happen for some period of time or what have you. Look, it's a reasonable concern. And at this stage, what we've seen is that there are alternative tools to non-competes that you can use to protect legitimate trade secrets, legitimate IP, so you can use non-disclosure agreements that can be tailored. Uh, we also have trade secrets law, right? Uh, employers bring hundreds of lawsuits a year right. to enforce trade right. secrets. The conundrum there is that's after the fact. It, it's typically, when I say after the fact, it's typically after somebody has arguably uh, taken a trade secret and used it, and so the employer has been, quote unquote, injured, right? They're having to show injury this, the, one of the reasons they have non-competes or these type of uh, arrangements is to prevent even getting into a position where, they're, where they have to show injury first, right? That's right. But we've also seen instances in which, you know, people break non-competes, they, they go anyway, and right. employers are having to enforce after the fact anyway. But at this stage, our thesis is that there are these alternative mechanisms that would still protect legitimate trade secrets, protect IP, but not have such a drag on the economy in the way right. that we see non-competes do. What do you say to those who say, look, the FTC actually doesn't even have the authority to put this rule into place, the Section 5, and we can get into details of what that is, doesn't really allow for this. And this, if it ever got to the Supreme Court, especially given the politics of how you think about the Supreme Court today, that this is uh, dead in the water before it starts. Look, Congress gave the FTC the authority to check unfair methods of competition. Uh, they told us that we could do that through a variety of ways, uh, through bringing lawsuits, but also through bringing rules, uh, through, through issuing market-wide rules. And so we're confident that the, the text and, and structure of the FTC Act gives us clear right. authority to do this. Um, there have been times where you have proposed rules, um, they've had a comment period, and then you have not enacted those rules. How do you think about that? Yeah, it's a great question. So as you noted, this is a proposed rule. Uh, we've put out a proposal. We're going to be collecting comments for 60 days. The proposed rule is based on our survey of the available evidence. Right. But we also include a set of questions that we're inviting the public to comment on. So once people have finished commenting, we're going to look at that full record and determine what's the best way to go forward. So we really encourage people, uh, be it employers, be it startups, entrepreneurs, workers, uh, to submit comments and, and help us decide how to right. proceed.